So normally a DHA starts by assembling the DHA team. So you get everyone together, you discuss the goals of the DHA, you'll discuss the processes that you're going to be reviewing, and you'll come up with a timeline for how you go through those processes. And a lot of times you'll pull those documents that you assembled earlier when you're preparing for the DHA and you'll start listing the equipment that you're going to be looking at. That way um, you can make sure that the team is all in the same spot and that we go through that efficiently and systematically and don't miss anything. So the first step is developing the list of equipment. What you'll do is you'll look at the plot process flow diagrams, you'll look at the facility layout drawings, and you might take a quick tour of the facility. Then you start looking at each individual piece of equipment together. And again, the, the reason you want to make sure you have the list accurate is you don't want to miss anything, and you want to be as thorough as possible on site. For each piece of equipment that you're reviewing in the DHA, you're trying to identify what is the state of the material in there. So is it being handled in a way that creates a dust cloud, or is it a way that you have combustible material in, um, in a piece of equipment that could be a fire hazard? Um, and you really look at those two things. Is the equipment handled in a way that's only a fire hazard, or is there a way that you could get that um, dust suspended in the air, creating an explosion hazard? The way the material is being moved through a process will help you learn how it might become airborne. So having a good understanding of what each piece of equipment is doing and how it's handling the material helps you. If it's a pneumatic conveying system, then you know that the uh, material is being you know, suspended in air to be conveyed. Then you look at what's it connected to. Is it connected to a cyclone or a bag house? Um, how do the particles behave in those collection devices? Once you know where the dust is in the process, so either it's in a layer that could be a fire hazard or if it's suspended in um, air and it could be an explosion hazard, uh, then you look at what could ignite the dust cloud. So you have mechanical ignition sources where you have metal on metal contact that could create a spark. You have um, static electricity hazards inside uh, equipment if it's not properly uh, bonded or grounded and this is particularly a concern in pneumatic conveying systems. Uh, you can ask, also have hot surfaces so you can have overheated bearings, you can have um, heated processes so if you have a dryer or if you have a furnace you can have just heated um, surfaces because of the equipment itself. So there's a lot of different ignition sources that we have to review so what you want to do is look at each piece of equipment and systematically go through a list of potential ignition sources to say, does it exist or does it not? Um, because if there is a credible ignition source and there is an enclosed dust cloud, then you have potential for an explosion. Once you've identified potential dust clouds and potential ignition sources, then you try to um, think about what are the consequences of a fire or an explosion inside the piece of equipment. Once you've identified potential consequences of a fire or explosion, you look to see what existing safeguards there are. So when we look at existing safeguards, we want to make sure that we've evaluated their effectiveness. Are they in the right spot? Are they applied accurately? Um, do you have design documentation to show that the material that you're using now is the same that these uh, pieces of equipment were used for or designed for. Um, we also want to make sure that it's maintained. So explosion and deflagration protection equipment requires maintenance. And if it's not properly maintained, then um, it might not work effectively. I think as many people know, the greatest hazard associated with combustible dust is from secondary explosions. This is when you have accumulated dust in a process or some type of upset condition that creates a dust cloud in the building compartment um, where the employees are exposed. And when you have a deflagration outside the process equipment in the room, it could be the greatest hazard. So that's a major component of a DHA is to look at the different rooms, different areas, and try to see under what conditions could a dust cloud exist. Could it be an upset condition, say you have leaks in pipes? Or could it be through accumulation of dust in hard to reach and uh, often neglected areas? So we make sure to 
uh, review all of these locations. When conducting the DHA, you want to make sure you document any recommendations that address all the additional safeguards that are needed to protect a process and make sure it's safe.